Good morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan, and on behalf of our uh, staff, our congregation, we want to say welcome. Thank you for being with us in worship today. And so if you're joining us online, we want to say a special word of welcome to you as well. And today we are wrapping up our Keeping Christmas series with a message about uh, how to keep Christmas going. And so that's where we're headed today. If you're uh, joining us in person today, the ushers are going to come around in just a moment and share with you the red attendance pads. We hope that you'll take a minute let us know that you've been here. If you're online with us today, we hope that you'll take a moment and uh, that you'll go to medfordumc.org slash Sunday. And there you'll find a place where you can record your attendance. You can also uh, download our app. You can submit a prayer request, make a gift, um, and just in general learn a little bit more about the church. And so we welcome you to do that. You can do the same thing here uh, if you're in the space this morning by scanning the QR code that's on the seat in front of you or uh, on the back of your bulletin today. So I think that um, this morning we just have one announcement. Danielle, you want to talk for just a moment about the uh, blood drive? Okay, very good. Okay. Good morning. We are hosting our first Red Cross Blood Drive of 2024 this Thursday from 2 to 7 p.m. in the FLC. We currently have 10 slots left. So let's start off the new year by helping to save three lives through your one blood donation. If you have any questions, please see me after the service. You can visit our church website or you can check the church's weekly newsletter. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. I think that those are all the announcements, and so I'll invite Chris to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning. morning. And happy New Year's Eve morning. (laughs) Did you get that right? (laughs) Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. On the cusp of the new year, The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter 2024 with hope and excitement. O Lord, remind us that you lead us and guide our steps. Amen.
be seated. Please join in the opening prayer. May God make our new year a happy one, not by shielding us from all sorrows and pain, but by strengthening us to bear it as it comes. Not by making our path easy, but by making us sturdy, proud, and driven. Not by taking hardships from us, but by taking fear from our hearts. Not by granting us unbroken sunshine. Not by making our life always pleasant, but by, by showing us when people need us, and, and by moving us to be there to help. May God's, God's love, peace, hope, and joy surround us in the year ahead. <clears throat> The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Young man. Um, there's a lot of COVID going around, so you might want to just not shake hands or hug, but just greet each other. Get up and greet each other this morning. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of Luke, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the second chapter, beginning with verse 25. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. <clears throat> <clears throat> Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word. 
because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for the revelation to the Gentiles. <clears throat> Excuse me, this morning frog problem. And a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that gen- generates opposition, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There is also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshipped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of the scriptures. We thank you for your presence here among us. We pray that as we think together about what it is that um, you would have us learn this morning, that you might be present here in these words, that they might become your words, whether through me or in spite of me. We pray that you might speak and make yourself heard this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to say something that may surprise you. But the more that I do this work, the more that I become convinced that the church is absolutely full of atheists. And I don't just mean like people in the pews, but I mean also among the clergy. Yeah, the church is absolutely full of atheists. Now, I hope that I have your attention. But I want to set that aside for a moment. Because before I talk about that, I want to talk about a couple of people who most certainly were not atheists. So Simeon and Anna, who are the kind of characters in today's Bible passage, both were older folks. Both had seen their share of New Year's come and go. And in both of their days, they had seen their share of disappointments as well. We know, for example, that Anna was a longtime widow. She'd been widowed maybe... uh, something on the order of 60 years or more. And yet both of these figures who praise Jesus in the temple hold on to this one common hope. As the scripture puts it, the restoration of Israel. This word restoration, that's how it's described when it's talking about Simeon and what he was expecting, the restoration of Israel. This word in other translations uh, shows up as consolation. So if you're familiar with that hymn, um, Come Now Long Expected Jesus, that we sing during Advent, we talk about Israel's strength and consolation. It comes from this idea. Now, that word consolation is one that's interesting to me. So sometimes I'll be looking at, you know, a Bible passage, and I'll circle a word here or there and say, I wonder what that is when you go back to Greek. Right? And this particular word is interesting in the sense that it has a connection to this word that shows up in John's Gospel to talk about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit and this word both have something in common, in that they refer to someone who is summoned to your side. In other words, someone who comes to lend you aid, someone who comes to stand by you, to support you. So what we're saying is that Simeon was looking forward to the day that God would come and stand once more by Israel's side. He was eagerly awaiting kind of the answer to a long-standing cry for help. Now, how long-standing? I'm not 100% sure, but my guess would be in this context something on the order of 600 years. At least since the time of the exile, when the people had been um, conquered by Babylon, 
the leaders in Jerusalem, the priests, all the nobility, well carried off, lived in Babylon for generations. And the region then, after that, was ruled by a succession of empires under which Israel had little or even no autonomy. The people had been praying for a Savior for at least that long, expecting it, anticipating it, hoping for it. But 600 years is a long time to wait for a prayer to be answered. I'm wondering if you think about your own lives. What's the longest you've ever had to wait for a prayer to be answered? What's the thing that you're praying for now that still remains to be met? How long has it been? So you can see how a long time of prayers not being answered would lead you right up to the precipice of failing faith. Would lead you right up to the precipice of atheism. And I will come back to that, but not yet. Because first we need to say just a little bit more about Simeon and Anna. Simeon, in the scripture says, was a righteous man. And in fact, the language that gets used to talk about Simeon is unique. It talks about the idea that the Spirit rested on him. As though the Spirit kind of filled him day by day. Now, if you read in the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament, what you get the sense of is God showing up in people's lives, actually possessing them, at least for a period of time, so that when you meet them, when you encounter them, they are so filled with God's presence that you see nothing else. Now, I can't think of anyone else in the New Testament is described in exactly the same way. So Simeon is something special. There's something different about him. I don't know exactly all the dimensions of that, but what I know is that according to the scripture, he had been promised that before he departed this life, that he would see what God was doing. He would see the Lord's Messiah. Anna, too, every day she prayed, she fasted, she waited for the redemption of Israel. Now, I'm sure that there were many who are praying for, waiting for, expecting, hoping, anticipating that the Messiah would arrive. In fact, it was part of the daily prayer life in the synagogue, daily prayer life in the temple, just in the same way that it's part of our daily prayer life to pray, that we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? We pray these things anticipating that God will do something different. But let's be honest. When we pray those forward-looking prayers, how seriously do we actually anticipate God doing something different? The difference between Anna and Simeon and everyone else who is praying those prayers is that they actually believed that they might see it. They anticipated it. They looked for it. And when it happened, they were ready to greet what God was doing in this child who showed up at the temple. Now, how many of us actually live that way? You know, over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the idea of how we keep Christmas well. And today we're thinking about the idea of keeping Christmas going. In order to do that, I'd say at the heart of what it means to keep Christmas going is to keep alive that expectation. Expectation that that child who was born in Bethlehem is still here, is still walking around among us, is still present in the world. I think frequently we get to Christmas. We have our celebrations. All the presents are unwrapped. We come to church. And we say, well, the baby's born. Right? Now, those of you who have ever lived through that moment where you brought a child home from the hospital, 
know that that's not exactly how it works. You don't like go to the hospital, have the baby come home and say, well, that was, that was a thing we did. That was cool, right? There's a lot more to it. You remember how afraid you are when you first have to change a diaper? When you first have to feed that child? When they start to cry and you don't know why? And then you realize that there is something that's expected of you, not just for a moment, but every day to come. That thing changes. It changes in 18 months, and it changes at two years, and it changes at five years, and it changes at 10 years, and it changes at 15 years, and at 25 years, and at 40 years. It's different, but there's always this expectation that comes along with welcoming the child. You don't get back to normal life. I think too many of us get through Christmas and then want to just return to normal life. But Jesus wasn't just born. He's still here. My question is whether we actually live our lives that way. Whether we actually believe that. Whether we go through our days anticipating that God will show up. That Jesus will show up. That something will happen as a result of the fact that Jesus has been born into our world. Or are we functionally atheists? Not necessarily intellectual atheists. I mean, if I were to ask you, do you believe in God? My guess is the majority would say, yes, of course. But there's a difference between intellectually believing something and actually leaving space in your heart and in your life for God to be a real presence. To really have the power to do something. Most of us go through our days functionally, as though God doesn't actually exist. Now, Parker Palmer may have been the one to coin this phrase, functional atheism. If you're not familiar with him, he's an excellent writer, on, especially on the idea of vocation. What am I made to do? What has God created me for? What's my purpose? He's got a great book that's called Let Your Life Speak. And he defines this idea of functional atheism this way. The belief that ultimate responsibility for everything rests with us. Any of you have that in your life? The idea that everything rests with you? This is the unconscious, unexamined conviction that if anything decent is going to happen here, we are the ones who must make it happen. A conviction that's held by people who talk a good game about God. Does this idea resonate with you? I certainly see myself. I have a hard time sitting still for five minutes and just allowing God to speak. I find it difficult to do that. I certainly have the experience all the time, whether it's for me other church leaders, clergy that I know, denominational leaders, all of us are so busy learning and studying what's the best way to do church now in this moment that we fail to leave room for God to actually show up. We're acting as though everything depends on us we're so mightily tempted to believe that we're the ones in charge. We forget that there is this thing called a kingdom that we pray for. We forget about the Jesus who is the king that we pray to. Sometimes the best spiritual discipline for us is actually to lose control. I can't tell you the number of clergy 
that I've talked to through the years will say things to me like, you know what I really got to know who God was? I really got to know who God was that time that I was in the hospital for this or for that. When I was in crisis, when I faced the most difficult thing that I could possibly face. Why is it that we have to come to this moment when we face crisis in order to learn who it is that God really can be in our lives? God wants us to be free, but God doesn't want us to be independent. God answers prayers if we will take the time to listen and observe how God may be answering it. Our God comes alongside us in our time of need, but only if we're able to see God at work in the faces of those whom God has sent to be there and be present and to be God's representatives in our lives. That's what Christmas is about for us, remember? Loving people close up rather than at arm's length. God comes alongside us to take on human form so that God can fully understand and identify with the work that we've been given to do and understand what it is that it means to be human. So in 2024, I think this is the charge for us not to live as functional atheists, but instead to look to Anna and Simeon and others as our models. Those who live out of this conviction that God is real and that God is doing something, that God is going to show up, that God isn't simply the baby in the manger, but God is genuinely present in our everyday lives, that God answers prayers. Simeon and Anna were not playing at living in God's presence. They were not playing at serving God. They were not playing at having faith. And so today, neither should we. The atheists can stay on the outside of the church. We don't need to also live as atheists. We are called to live as people who expect God to show up and do something. To show up and be part of what it is that God is calling us to do. Keeping Christmas going, it's not just about having the faith to welcome Jesus into the world, but it's about making space in our hearts for this expectation that God can show up at any time and in any place. Let's take some time. Let's pray together. God, we give you thanks that 2,000 years ago you showed up. Let us not simply walk away from the manger thinking that, well, that was something. But remind us day by day that you continue to be at work, that you continue to be at work, that you call us, that you equip us, that you answer prayer, that you come alongside us when we are in need. God, we pray that we might live in the expectation that you will show up. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle stall. Sin lowing, little knowing.
heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow. So, friends, there are just a few hours left in 2023, just a few hours left um, to help us to ensure that we reach our goals and uh, finish out 2023 strong. We are incredibly grateful for your support. On Christmas Eve, we announced a $15,000 dollar-for-dollar match, and I'm happy to say we've done very well with that. We met that goal, but there's still a little bit of a ways to go in order for us to meet all of our goals for the year and in order to close out um, this year financially strong. So we are grateful for your gifts. If you'd like to make a donation today uh, to support the ministry of the church, we uh, welcome you to do that. There's an offering plate at the back. But right up till midnight tonight, you can make a gift either online or through the app in a way um, in that, and uh, to be able to receive credit for 2023. And so we're really grateful for all the ways that you support the ministry of the church, all the ways that you show up and be part of what God is doing in this place. Let's continue now by offering our gifts and our offerings. Isn't oh no, there it is. Thank you. Well, you you see the choir anthem is mentioned uh, in the bulletin that's to come, but we're going to need a little bit of help. If you look around you, you see there are not quite as many people in the pews as there were last week, and if you look up in our choir loft. If you don't look to the right, the particular side, you won't see anybody there. But we've consolidated our choir into the into one side of our choir loft, um, partly because some of our folk are just as many friends of yours might be suffering from COVID uh, as it rears its ugly head again. And because this is just what is one of the Sundays, it's called a low Sunday, even though we are celebrating the end of one year and the beginning of the next. Um, but for, for our anthem today, we're going to need a little bit of help from you. Now, this piece of music is in our hymnal, but it's one of those odd pieces that doesn't really sound much like Christmas, and we don't usually do it very much unless Bruce has a hand in it because it's one of his favorite Christmas pieces. So we are now going to try to make it one of ours. Um, now, you will notice that yeah, the words aren't on, up, the refrain isn't up there uh, on the uh, screen yet, but the refrain is in Latin, and the words are E-D-O, O, O, E-D-O, Gloria in excelsis Deo. You probably know the in excelsis Deo part because that's used in some other Christmas carols. But E-D-O, that word uh, translates, according to our hymnal, as therefore. So therefore, God has... Uh, has come in glory. Um, and that's the part that we're going to ask your help with. Now, it's not that the choir doesn't know it, because we've practiced it quite quite a bit the last <laughs> at our last rehearsal. But um, I thought it would be kind of a fun thing for you to join in the anthem with us. So I'm going to ask the choir if they would sing the refrain. Bruce will play it along. And if you would just uh, listen to it, and then you're going to get your own chance to sing it. Just think, you can go home today and say, oh, I was at a Methodist church and, and we sang Latin. doesn't happen too often here, but it can be a kind of a fun thing. So, choir, if we could just do that refrain. And there, it's up on the board and you can follow. Now it's your turn. Let's see if you can sing along with us. We'll, we'll help you, but I'll bet you can do it too. Okay, let's try it. And. Yeah, 
Very nice. Good job. All right. Well, we're going to start now at the beginning, and you can follow the words up there, or you could even turn in your hymnals to page 248. You can even see the music in there and follow along with us. And then when we get to after we have sung the fourth verse, if you could join in with us on the refrain, and um, we'll have kind of tie a nice little bow on all of our Christmas music. be seated. And please join in the prayer of thanksgiving. 
Holy God of new beginnings, as we share our tithes and offerings with you, we are filled with hope. We enter 2024 with expectation. We leave behind a time of fear and uncertainty, and we raise our heads because we know you have drawn near to us. May our gifts be dedicated to help heal the brokenness of our world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. to take some time now to go to God in prayer. And as we do that, I'll encourage you to lift up your voices uh, for situations or for individuals that you're praying for today. If you're online with us, we encourage you to, uh, to also raise your prayers in the comment section on Facebook. If we're praying for individuals, I invite you just to use first names only, please. As we pray together, uh, let's begin in just a few moments of silence. God, we thank you that you stepped into our world. We recognize that so often we take that for granted. That we think of that as something that happened once, rather than something that's happening all the time. That we should live in expectation of what it is that you are doing next. God, we pray that as we go from this place into the world, that you might open space in our hearts and in our minds to live in that expectation that you are at work. We look around the world, we see challenges in all kinds of ways. We know that there are people in our lives who are struggling in addiction, who are trying their best to be able to hold things together because someone that they love, they've lost. But we pray for all those who are dealing with particular losses around this holiday. We know that it's difficult to be alone. We know that there are those who are um, just so desperately in need of a connection. And so we pray that you might make us mindful of those whom we might serve, that we might be those who pick up the phone, who stop by for a visit, who reach out to someone, and help them to know that God is present, that they are loved. We look around the world and know that there are so many people living in the shadow of violence. So we pray for those in Gaza and the West Bank. We pray for the people of Israel. We pray for Ukraine and Russia. We pray for all the places around the world where there is no peace and ask for your spirit to descend on the hearts of leaders everywhere, the hearts of people everywhere, that together we might Seek the peace that you promised on the day that the angels announced your birth in Bethlehem. God, we are grateful that you have brought us here this morning. And we're grateful for the opportunity to have our prayers heard by you who are the creator of all things. So today we raise our voices in prayer for people who are close to us. 
So I invite you to name those that are on your hearts right now. God, we thank you for your presence with us, and we anticipate all the ways in which you will continue to be present with us throughout this week. Help us to expect it. Help us to look for you. Help us to leave space in our minds for you to fill in the gaps where we know that we do not have all we need in order to be successful in the ways that we are called to serve you. We trust that you are still at work. We pray that you will be present in those moments. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Keep Christmas going by continuing to live in the expectation that God is still in the world, that Christ will continue to show up, that God continues to have work for us to do. Go forth knowing that you are sent, that you are loved, and that God goes with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.